up YouTube? My name is Mario, aka the Loot Box Hero, aka YouTube's greatest fat man, bringing you another video. Alright, so, of course, I know it's been a while since I brought you guys a video. I apologize, I've been doing stuff on the main channel, and trying to balance on both is a wee bit difficult. But I ain't forgot y'all, y'all are not the red-headed stepchild of the... Uh, R.S. Mario Cinematic Universe of YouTube. Uh, that would be my gaming channel. <laughs> God, I haven't been over there in a long time. Um, but yeah, so, Squid Game. You know what I'm saying? So, Squid Game is probably looking to become the, the next, the biggest show Netflix has ever made. Um, now, I don't know if that is marketing or what. Because this show does have some issues. It's definitely one of the best foreign language film, um, you know, shows that Netflix has. Because a lot of those shows are just imported. This show is specifically made by Netflix. And it's pretty good. Of course, you know, if you, wanna, if you want more videos like this from me, like, comment, subscribe, and do all that stuff that YouTube wants you to do in order to get videos. So, Squid Game follows Ji Han. He is a... Uh, He's a South Korean man who essentially is just a down-on-his-luck type of fellow and crappy father. He's a beatnik. He mooches money from his mother. He, he gambles the money that he mooches from his mother and doesn't pay his debts, which all gets him into a lot of trouble, so much so that the debt collectors want to take his kidney and one of his eyes. Damn. <laughs> So, he ends up in this death game. And essentially, if you don't know what a death game is, it's essentially a game where, you know, uh, people have to do a specific game. And, you know, people die and the last person to win usually wins some kind of prize. In anime, usually it's like money or like becoming God. So, yeah, in this game, in this particular game called Squid Game... You play a bunch of old school childhood games and, well, you know, the winners win and the losers die. And the last person alive gets the, the added sum of all the debts of all 400 players who died in the game. Which is like 43 billion won. And that's what they're playing for. And it's forever hanging over their head to make sure they know that that's what they're playing for. And if you, if you are an old school anime fan like myself, you might see this show has a lot of parallels to the ultimate survivor, Kaiji. And you'd be right, it does. Kaiji is essentially a Japanese beatnik himself who gets into a lot of trouble because he owes people some money and he has to play a bunch of games of chance that are highly dangerous and he loses a bunch of fingers in the process. And he could die, you know. Watch Kaiji. It's actually a pretty good show. Oh, now, of course, uh, I'm going to do um, kind of like the, the, the good and the bad of the show. And then I'm going to go ahead and end off this review. We're going to start with the bad first. That's not the kind of face you should keep behind the mask. If you can satisfy me in five minutes, I'll change your life. Bro, the plot armor in this show is freaking like god tier plot armor, bro. Like, mad plot armor in this show. It's crazy. Like, the, the plot armor in this show makes the Berserk armor look like some cheap leather armor you got off of Skyrim, man. It's crazy. I mean, the show doesn't have to be, like, Game of Thrones. But the plot armor in the show kind of takes away some of the tension. Because after, like, the first, like, maybe three games where the main character comes in with, like, half a second to spare... It's like, oh, this is going to be a pattern, isn't it? He's always going to be, like, barely making it in there. 
But he's always going to make it in there, though, because he's the main character. It is a minor spoiler, by the way. Another bad part about this show is this show kind of drops off in the last third. But, I mean, it, it's, this is something that really happens in almost every death game. You know, Battle Royale, you know, a lot of the death game anime. This is a big plot point in them always. And usually what it is, oh, it's being run by a bunch of rich people. And they're just watching the carnage unfold because they're all rich sociopaths. And, like, it, this, the plot kind of goes to that direction. Luckily, luckily, that's not the the center of the story. But, I mean, that that does happen in, like, the last third of the show. And it's like, it really falls off. And, and, and the character, oh my god, the, the freaking VIPs. I was like, why do they keep cutting back to these characters? They're, they're, all of these characters are all of these characters are straight up tropes, all of them, straight down to the the fat rich white guy that really wants a blowjob. <laughs> Please, like these characters suck. You know what I'm saying? So it, it kind of really takes some of the tension out of the show, but the show still has plenty of tension though. So there are several plot lines in this show that just kind of go nowhere. It involves uh, some pretty grisly behavior. That, that really kind of sets the tone of like, oh, everybody involved with this is screwed in some way or another. And they're doing what they can for money. Even the people who are like staff, you know what I'm saying? But then again, like these are staff, like nobody cares about these particular characters. If you would have cut that out, we wouldn't have missed anything there. Because they're nameless, faceless, masked people. So you don't really care. It's almost like if they did a like a, a storyline with like stormtroopers. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody cares about stormtroopers. Like the, the franchise barely even cares about stormtroopers. You know, so this storyline really didn't need to happen. And there's a lot of storylines like that that are in there. And it's like, I mean, it doesn't feel as bad as like filler. But at times, it's like, did we need this? Like, if we would have cut out some of these storylines, this could have been a, a clean, like, seven-episode show. Just to be honest. Like, like a, like a good seven. <laughs> this is essentially, like, the games, right? So the games are probably some of the best parts of this show. Like at times I, I get to the, I get to it where I'm like I'm just waiting for the next game. Like you should you should want to be you know sit and listen to all the characters and get all the little in between stories because that kind of stuff sets up some of the tension you see in the games. But a lot of times I just want to get to the next game. Like I want to see what the next game's gonna be. I want to see who's gonna die next, even though I know it's not gonna be any of the main characters. I want to get to the next game because the games are cool like just the idea of like you playing like freaking duck duck go and then like you can you if you screw up in duck duck go you could die or, or uh, red light green light red light green light is the game if you screw up in a preschool game like red light green light something that you play at recess you could die that makes for good TV. So, speaking of the characters, the characters are probably one of the best parts of this show. Because usually in a death game show, I uh, usually in death games, the characters are like archetypes. You know what I'm saying? Or tropes. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have the main character, then you have the love interest, and then you have the friend, and then everybody else is like a trope. You've got, like, the alpha Chad dude. You've got, like, the devious girl. You've got, like... And some of these characters do kind of follow the tropes, but they have backstories and they're, they're different. You know what I'm saying? Like these characters, like they actually build up stakes for these characters. So you actually kind of want to see some of them win. There was a character in here I really wanted to see her win or at least survive somehow because of her backstory. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to see her have a happy ending, you know? That was, that was the prediction that didn't work out for me. <laughs> that was the one prediction that didn't work. I was like, really? I predicted everything else in the show, but the one thing I wanted to work was like, nah, bro, you don't get that one.
like Hollywood shows tend to be kind of like they they seem to be kind of like preaching to you or like at you when it comes to like it's like it's like socio political messages. Like they seem to be really like at you with it. You know, there's no subtlety, there's no nuance. Like it's literally like it's about as subtle as a brick to the head. That that's about how subtle Hollywood is when it comes to the messages in his movies nowadays. But this one doesn't do that. Like, I mean, yeah, it does have its political message. You know, stuff like, you know, enjoying life while you can. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, money can't buy you happiness. You know, there's a ton of different themes in this, in this show. But it's, it's written into the show and into the characters. It's not like, you know, like, oh, we're just going to throw this right at you. Like, hey. You know what I'm saying? Like black people. That's the that's the whole part of our movie, man. No, it, it's not that easy. You know what I'm saying? They actually write it in there so you're going to get the message, but it's not like they're beating you over the head with the message. You know, and that way, that right there makes it one of the best things I've seen all year as far as coming from Hollywood. You know, and this is a Netflix production, so technically it came from Hollywood, even though it was made in Korea. This wasn't one of the like other shows that Netflix get where they kind of just like, oh, look, you have a show. Can we import that? Here's like, you know, fifty thousand dollars. Can I stick it on my streaming service? Like, no, they actually funded and made this show themselves. So that's interesting. All right. So Squid Game definitely gets a B. You know what I'm saying? There are issues with the show, like the plot armor kind of ruins the, the the tension and the predictability also kind of does that. But beyond that, Squid Game is a must watch. So that's about it for this. Of course, like, comment, subscribe. Check out my second, uh, my main channel for some more videos that are going to pop up with this week. And good day to you.